pre-planted to, to Morning, everyone. Um, those of you who don't know, I'm Rupert Kopan, uh, ex of Cape Nature, ex of the Botanical Society, now just here because I'd like to see our plants conserved properly. Um, and I think this company really enjoys Latin. And so the new thing that I'd want to see out of Africa and out of this meeting is that it isn't just a talk shop and we do get impact on the ground. Um, because, yeah, Erika's are in trouble. And I just want to reiterate, when do we have our first um, BGCI meeting? 2020, maybe? Beginning yeah. Of, yeah, beginning of 2020. And I said, we don't need anything except three things. It's like, we know that the Erika's are in trouble because of habitat loss, too frequent or infrequent fire, and aliens. And nothing's changed. Um, so, that's the, the, the thrust I want to get through in terms of uh, what Mike was saying. So we've got a long list of prioritizations and I'm looking forward to hear everyone's research today. But what I really want us to, whenever we are working in this space, is to anchor it towards it. And I think it's also moving away from the world's going to shit, excuse me, <laughs> and there's not much we can do and government's doing this and procurement systems are doing that. You know what we can do? I've got one of these fold up saws in my bag. <laughs> and you walk in the field and you cut down some aliens around the Erika's and you make sure that the data comes in um, and so forth. And we spend much more time connecting to each other around these things. So it's not like, oh, I see you every three years. And what about this thing that we were supposed to do five years ago? Like, we just need to like focus in a little bit. So um, as Mike said, uh, the biggest, and I said, biggest issue is habitat loss. So if you look at um, out of the same BNBA, um, does the cursor work? Okay, doesn't matter. Essentially, where most of the dark red, critically endangered stuff is a very neat overlap with where um, the Erika hotspot diversity is. You'll see the Kuchelberg, the Boland Mountains um, next to uh, the Swatland and so forth. So, habitat loss is still an issue, um, even in our, our critically endangered areas like the Red and Norster 12. Alien invasives are still an issue. <laughs> um, and also, I've just come back from the northern Cedarburg and, and bits of the Cedarburg where we've had our first fire as of the 1st of October. So, that's not changed either. Um, and the interesting thing from a conservation point of view, because I think in this space as well, who, who's worked in conservation at, at the conservation agency? Hands up. Because I do find sometimes that this, that this kind of symposium because where you talk about conservation is like a slightly risque thing that people in Corky do, and you don't really understand it. Um, and we really need to get to this point of understanding how the nuts and bolts work so we can tag in our various research items and get in the funding much better to sort this crisis out. So the reason why that fire raged for like four or five days instead of one day uh, is because all the, um, you know, there's working on fire and they've got a set of resources and they, uh, they're strategically deployed from the winter rainfall to the summer rainfall area in the peak of the fire. So we don't have a chopper in the Cape currently because it's not yet peak fire season. <laughs> but as we've now seen, the fires don't know that and the landscape is dried up. And we know that, that the, um, from the, the cedar work as well, that that area is being impacted severely by climate change. So this requires not another research paper, but maybe a couple of moles so we can have a, a chopper close by to scramble in case of emergency. Um, because I had a quick call with Ross this morning, um, Ross Turner, who some of you know, has got the Erica database and most of you have worked with. Uh, and I'm like, okay, there was a fire in, in the Northern Cedarburg. Is there anything that you know about? And then he was immediately able to go to his database and say, um, I think it's Erica uh, Aspalathoides which is um, rare in that area and would have been affected by this fire. 
So I heard what you said about the database, but we already have a database which can kick out information within five minutes. So um, I think the next thing I want to um, throw out here is the fact that we've got a national plan conservation strategy. Now I'm going to be that annoying guy today because I'm independent who with each presentation is going to ask, have you thought of linking your research to one of the 16 targets in our national plant conservation strategy? Because it's been there since 2015 and I'm still meeting people working in the Cape Floristic region who are unaware of the content. <laughs> and so again, cohesion is important. It's not just about us having a, a fun time. It's nice to see all of you face to face. <laughs> um, then, uh, actually, to the, to the beginning of my, my the topic that was on on your program, thanks, Mike. <laughs> is uh, we could in detail between Ishmael and I put together like a four-hour presentation with music from Titanic about the various ecosystems and how under pressure they are. But just because I've been in Elam recently, um, Elam Ferry Creek um and I want to thank Rebecca. Um, what's Rebecca's name? So, Thomas. Thomas, yeah. Rebecca Thomas from Fluid Force Foundation has been doing great work out in um, in the Elam Ferric Ridge Framebos. And so they've been working on on the ground conservation, um, tracking down Elam Ferric Ridge Framebos and also measuring the extent of it. And basically, we've all been faffing around in Westerfell, but Elam Ferric Ridge Framebos is now also down to about 10% or less of original extent. Um, extremely charismatic vegetation type. You all know Erica Regia or should, which is um, characteristic of, of the unit. And, you know, there's issues there. And the only people really working in Elam, Elam Ferry Creek Fainbos are the NGOs. So there's not a lot of conservation action. And um, let's go and do some. So on Elam Ferry Creek Fainbos, and this brings in Ross and, and um, some of the ta taxonomic things. Um, we had a crew weekend um, in the beginning of September, essentially. Went to Grootbos, and um, we now know that Elam Ferricutes Feinbos is an issue. We also know that the Overberg, especially the lowlands, is where a lot of really threatened areas are. And Ross um, sent us an email <laughs> saying, uh, I looked at the red list and Erica Brownie is listed as a least concern in, in the last assessment, which was done in 2006. It seems to have slipped under the radar because uh, he, as you know, Ross is now based in the Eastern Cape um, and he hasn't been in this landscape and, and he's back now doing some work at Grootbos for the long term um, monitoring. And so when he put on the historical localities, Pretty much all of them are gone. <laughs> so um, you'll see right there, there's, okay, well, sorry for the guys on the line. Over there, last year, Rebecca Thomas um, collected one um, on one of the, the farms, but all the others seem to be in the middle of wheat fields or, or something else. And then um, Rebecca sent a piece to Ross and he was able to confirm it and um, now we know that this species should be critically endangered um just with what we've got so how do we move that critically endangered species to a point where there's some resources immediately scrambled to it like we want the chopper to be scrambled to the fire um so i'm pretty much done uh, but this is just us in field in um, the kind of early 2010s, with this massive rediscovery of um, Erica uh, Jasmine eflora, a plant which we thought had been reduced down to two plants in the wild. And uh, we've got Ishmael in the background, we've got Ross, I'm taking the picture. <laughs> and um, just to show that, you know, like, how do we ensure that these linkages make work on the ground and not that when we have a symposium in three years time we're talking about legacy things so 
uh, 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 one thing that you didn't say about Anthony, for example, is that Anthony was an incredibly, Anthony Hitchcock was an incredibly good grower of Erica's. He knew them in the wild. But another thing that Eric, that Anthony did on his weekends was get his hands dirty going down to the Kai doing restoration and alien clearing. So um, let's go with that legacy. Thank you. I have a, a very quick, mm -hmm. a quick question. It's a quick question, but it's, it's probably it's, it's the kind of thing that would easily make me unpopular too, which is you say we've already got the, we have the data. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we do in principle, but um, unless the data is openly available to everyone, we don't have the data. And this is where the, the proprietary stuff starts coming in. Mm. <laughs> and, and what I meant by out of Africa somewhere new is also the kind of research um, work that is not exploitative of people who have collected it for nothing and 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 um, going forward um, that we include everyone working in the space because there's a lot of politics in the space guys <laughs> and it's not helping the area what, so. what do you see possibilities for going forward in that way um so you know uh the 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 research or the proposals we've, we've put forward so far as the bgci group right has been for the gap analysis and so um, I know that there are opportunistic bits of funding for saving species out there um, not just from the obvious marmot binside or locally table mountain fund and so forth but there's bits and pieces all over the place including pots of restoration money um, and what we need this group to go out there now that we've got the anchor of a group is to actually say oh we've seen this funding application we could probably get 10,000 pounds for, for clearing um, or doing restoration work because that's where the money is sitting these days. In Elam Ferry Creeds Fainbos, channel it through the most appropriate place, whether it's the Botanical Society or Groot Bos Foundation or whatever. Um, I think we need to be opportunistic and Catholic in our, in our choices and then go from there um, as opposed to only focusing on the research. And the research is important, like we're never going to say stop doing cutting edge research. We need to know which funny um, pollination syndrome is happening so that we can include that in the planning. But like I want this process, if I'm to remain in involved, to be a lot less academic and, and, and a lot more focused. I think this is something we can definitely bring up in discussion. Because I, I think there is there is definitely a middle road that we will need to find yeah. out there. Otherwise, well, and, and it starts with more than one um, conservationist in the room, and also more than two people of a diverse background.